recently I was watching this video by Walter Vieth, and he's talking about the um, fact that the Jesuits are basically in the Roman Catholic Church is taking over the government here openly in America, and he's very right about that. I've been saying the same thing, and uh, played a very interesting video clip from Donald Trump where he uh, gives a message to Catholics. Let's listen to this. Catholics are an important part of the American story. America has been strengthened by hardworking Catholics. From New York to California, the Catholic story is truly unique, and it's a great story. From marching for civil rights to educating millions of children, serving the poor and helping define the pro-life movement, clergy and lay Catholics across the country have made countless contributions to the American success and the American success story. Washington politicians have been hostile to the church. They have been hostile to Catholics. They have been hostile to the members of Catholicism. My hostile to, to Catholics? The government here in this country? I don't think so. This is ridiculous. But you have a man who's Jesuit trained, so what would you expect? My administration will stand side by side with the American Catholics to promote the values we all share as Christians and Americans. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. We will make America great again. Sure. And he goes into talking about him a little bit here, but uh, we're going to go to this next video here of Mike Pence, the vice president. And um, here this guy is a Roman Catholic. He's an evangelical Christian now. And uh, I want to show you here the false uh, salvation, this easy believism stuff of this Mike Pence. Just going to find this very interesting. And there's something else he discusses too, which I'll be discussing in another video, so we're not going to watch this whole thing, but check this out. He was thoroughly Catholic. Let's listen to what he had to say. Walter Reed speaking here. Greetings, I'm Governor Mike Pence. You know, it's my honor this year to serve as the Republican nominee for Vice President of the United States with my running mate, Donald Trump. I'm Grateful to be able to join you, if only by videotape, but I'm not sure how they introduce me. The introduction I prefer is pretty short. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. And really, it's as a fellow believer uh, that I'm particularly honored to be able to address you today. I know every one of us has our own story about how we came to faith. For me, I was raised in a family where faith was important. Church on Sunday, grace before dinner. But my faith became my own when I made a personal decision to trust Jesus Christ during the spring of my freshman year in college. That night, my heart was literally broken wide with gratitude and with joy when I came to realize that what happened on the cross in some small measure actually happened for me. And I know all of you in the room share that same passion and that same sense of gratitude for what was done on our behalf. Years later, my faith has been tested, relied on more times than I could possibly count. All I know for sure today is I need him more than ever. And he's really the center of my life and the center of my family's life. Isn't that nice? Uh, did he turn from uh, Catholicism? Or is there a mention of repentance there? Being broken? Or, no, he just, he believed. That's all, he, that's all it takes for salvation, you know? According to a lot of brethren, that's that's all it takes. Let me just step forward here, find this other part. Around the American founding that thundered against the tyranny of King George, our nation for it. The choice of Donald Trump and our agenda to make America great again. In these troubled times at home and abroad, challenging times for American families, I'd I'd like to encourage you to do one more thing. Okay. I mean, if you if you can't wake up to this political acting thing here, I mean, really, I think that it's important that Christians everywhere truly come to an under. <laughs> like, it's acting, people. This guy's an actor, you know. But listen, listen to what he says here. Now, an easy believe is a heretic will say, hey, I put my faith in Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. You say, but did you turn from that life of wickedness and sin? Did you truly come in a broken state? You know? And they get all offended about that. And he quotes 
2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and he leaves out a few very interesting words. Watch this. And that is to bow the head and bend the knee in the days that remain in this election. Pray Important. for our country. But as you do so, please pray as, as Lincoln said was his prayer. Not so much that, that God would be on our side, but that we would be, in his words, on God's side touching as we're getting to it just bear with it here because i truly do believe in my heart of hearts that what's been true for millennia is still true today mm -hmm. that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray he'll again do as he's always done throughout the storied history of this nation he'll hear from heaven and he'll heal our land this one nation under god <laughs> okay um let me just look up a, a thing here. We'll come back to this other scripture here in just a minute, but Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen. Seems to have missed a few things there. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. I, I, he must have just misquoted it, of course. You know, funny that he misquoted the scene, the portion about sin, turning from sin and having sin forgiven. How convenient! How very convenient! Yeah, I don't think so. Um, here's the truth of salvation. Okay, this looking about this the other day, I was thinking about this, actually reading through the Bible and things. I came across this, and I thought, you know, this really defines what real salvation is all about from the Lord you know Jesus himself Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light true salvation is you come in a broken state you understand I just my life is so messed up I'm just like what, what else am I supposed to do you're just you're, you're at your wits end you're just everything's just falling apart you are laboring and heavy laden the sins are upon you just the weight of it and you're just pressing down you're just like I don't know if, the, if this doesn't work I, I have nothing else that I can do and it's such an amazing thing to know at that point that Jesus died for your sins and then he can take those sins away. You want a new life when you come truly broken. It's not just the understanding, hey, I'm a sinner. I've sinned before a holy, righteous God. There's contrition there. Contrition means you feel guilty and you want to do something about it. A broken, contrite spirit. Why do you want to do something about it? Because you're sick and tired of the sins that you were living in, <laughs> you know? You want to have a new life, but you know, you understand, I have tried everything to, to, to quit this life of sin, and I can't do it. There's nothing that I can do to stop this horrible, wicked course that I'm on. It's terrible. You see? That's the turning from sin. That's what happens there. It's not about a perpetual life of good works to stay saved. That is heresy. That is work salvation. Right? True biblical salvation is coming unto the Lord when you are heavy laden and 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 in labor and just like ah oh, I just I need help. No more self righteousness. You see, you're broken. You know better than somebody say. Well, you could probably save yourself. Are you kidding me? I've been trying for years and it has failed. That's what's going on here. Take my yoke upon you. So the Lord takes the burden of sin away, but then he puts a collar around your neck, a yoke. You're a bondservant. Your life is not your own anymore. You're bought with a price. You have to do what God tells you to do. You see? Uh, do you think old uh, Mike Pence here, do you think that, uh, do you think he is doing what the Lord tells him to do? Evangelical Catholic. Yeah, these guys have some very, very evil plans for this country. 
and uh, I'll tell you what if you're if you're trusting in this whole thing of this uh, I've just believed it's just belief it's just turning from unbelief to belief I mean how do you get that out of this passage Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 through 30 how do you get that out of there turning from unbelief to belief do you labor are you heavy laden when you are in unbelief labor and heavy laden there and, and and looking for rest looking for peace I just need help that's not the condition of somebody who just is un, in unbelief I don't know I don't know what to believe it's somebody who's struggling with sin and who needs help to get out of that sin so again another perfect example of a easy believism heretic this man who is now the vice president well he will be soon you know the 20th of this month or whatever so yes disgusting